He ate it that time. Oh, well, that's a good one. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, man. I'm so excited. This is one of my most favorite techniques in all of bass fishing, and it's sight fishing. I just, I think it's a lot like deer hunting. You know, there's a lot of stealth involved, a lot of quietness, a lot of hunting, looking for them. You know, I do way more looking than I do actual fishing. I want to break it all down for you guys. I'm going to show you the baits I throw when I'm looking, the baits I throw once I find one, and uh, I just love it. I, I don't care if it's a one pounder or a five pounder. I love sight fishing, guys. So you guys join me today. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, one of the biggest mistakes that I've made in my sight fishing career is getting in too big a hurry. You know, so much of the time, you know, I always want to just go fast, fast, burn my trolling motors up, just really, really look. And that's okay when you're on a body of water that they have those big, white, shining beds. But, you know, I'm on a body of water today, and if, if you didn't know that the water temperature was, you know, 67 degrees, and you didn't know it was springtime, you're not going to see these beds. They're dark spots. They're just where the grass is a little thinner. Um, so I go slow. I don't get in a big hurry. I keep that trolling motor on low. I try to keep it constant when I'm moving. So I just, I don't spook fish. I can get up on them closer. And that's how I see my biggest fish is, is not getting in a big hurry when I'm trying to sight fish. We have got lots of cruising fish. So many times, like right there, I just saw a fish. You know, I spooked that fish. He ran out. He's actually right here, almost coming underneath the boat. But I want to look to see where that fish came from. You know, he's going to have a, a home range up there that he might be trying to protect. And uh, a lot of times I can come back later, you know, after he sets back up and make a presentation up there where I don't spook him. There's two of them actually spawning right there. They're spawning on a log. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on a fish. If it swims off quickly and doesn't come back, you know, that's my general rule. You know, I want a fish to come back, you know, the quicker that fish will come back, generally the quicker you can catch that fish. If they, if they swim off and they're like, I, I don't waste a lot of time on those. I'm going to feel like I can find fish that, uh, that I can catch quicker than that. You know, it's so tempting to want to fish out in front of the boat while you're looking. And you, you're, you're not gonna do either one correctly. When I'm in full sight fishing mode, the only reason I have this rod in my hand is, is to hit that waypoint when I mark one or to slow my trolling motor up or to speed my trolling motor up. I don't like fishing while I'm sight fishing. I just, I don't think it's a, I don't think you're as effective uh, when you do that. I think you need to, do one or the other, either go fishing or commit to sight fishing and looking only because if I'm fishing, you know, and I look to where I cast, well, then I could have missed that fish swimming off because so many of the times, you know, those biggest fish are the hardest ones to see. They're the hidden the most, they're the deepest, you know, and it, 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 it's just really hard to see them. Like right there, I'm talking and I just glanced and I saw a really nice one, but I didn't see him in time. I don't know where he came from. One of the greatest things about sight fishing is, you know, you don't have to have a boat to do it. I really learned how to do it in ponds. You know, you can creep around those ponds. You can see those fish. You can mess with them day in, day out. Uh, you know, today I'm doing it in a bass boat. Trust me, I'd much rather be walking around a pond because, you know, you can just control so many more things. I can hide behind bushes. Uh, it's a lot of fun when you're doing it, you know, walking around ponds or rivers. I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions. You know, everybody thinks that beds are gonna be these big, bright, white, shining places. And uh, there are lakes that it's like that. But a lake like this, it's got a little bit softer bottom. Uh, a lake a lot of times, like maybe Toledo Bend, or there are dark spots. You actually look for a darker spot than you do a lighter spot. 
See, I really like that fish. That fish there just eased out ever so slowly. Wasn't spooked. That's its bed right behind the stump. I mean, you can just see one little clean spot right there on the back, the back right side of that stump. Um, I'm gonna see if that boat will drift back a little bit. Maybe we'll try to, try to fish for him just a little bit. See if he gets back up there and acts right. Oh, there he comes back up. Well, we got two of them. We got a male and a female swimming off to the right right there. See, I mean, that fish, it took it 15, 20 seconds to come back. So I'm trying to get myself distance. Distance is your friend. The further you can get away from these fish, the quicker, the easier it is to catch them. And, and I don't want to cast on him right away. I want to let that fish get accustomed to my boat. I'm kind of, I call it taming them. You know, just let that fish calm down, get accustomed to the boat, get accustomed to my presence. Uh, let him get back up there in his little range where he wants to feel comfortable. And all the time I'm getting a little further away, a little further away, which I like. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, gonna, it's gonna be easier when we go to try to catch this fish. His circles are getting a lot smaller, a lot tighter. Now he's not leaving but about three, four foot from the bed. I think it's time to try to see how he reacts to this bait. I like to try to throw past them and bring it to them when I can. The problem with that is I've got all kinds of moss back behind there. And I got it on my bait. Oh, here he comes. He's gonna be able to be caught. He's wanting to defend that big time. So I made my first presentation with this, this you know, weightless worm, stick worm, Berkeley General. I'm trying to let it fall right on that cleanest spot that I saw up there. Okay, that fish is coming around. He doesn't see my bait, so I just moved it a little bit, see if I can get his attention, and that stopped him. This may be one of those lakes, you know, one of my most favorite things to throw on, on, on bed and fish is a drop shot, you know, and um, this lake especially, because there's so much, I'm picking all this stuff off my bait every single time. So I'm not being very efficient. I like to have that bait in the bed when he comes back. You know, this fish here has been a little skittish when I throw it in there. And then like right there, he went to swim out. So I just, I moved it a little, got his attention and he turned. I think, I'm gonna see if I got a drop shot rigged up. The other thing that happens for me when I'm sight fishing is it gets personal. This isn't a big fish. It's the first fish I pulled up wanting to catch. And it just gets personal. I want to catch them. I don't care if they're, it, 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 it's my nemesis when I'm tournament fishing because if I ever set up on one, you know, there's an event that it took me two hours and 20 minutes to catch this bass. And it was an eight pounder and I won the event. But then I had another event, the classic at Conroe, I spent two hours and 30 minutes on a bass and I never caught it. So I guess the moral of the story is if you're like me, you gotta know when to, know when to fold them, know when to hold them because so I don't know when to fold them. I sit there and I stay and I stay and I stay. So I just, it's personal for me. I, I like catching them. Now I'm gonna have a really short tag on this. You don't need a long tag. You want it. I want that bait fairly close to the bottom because um, that's the area they're trying to protect. You know, there's no fry yet. Uh, there's nothing up high in the water column. You know, as the spawn progresses, stuff will move up in the water column. That's when you might want a longer tag. And the tag is from the hook to the weight. I'm going to venture to say this is not going to take very long to catch this fish. We've sat here you know, now for five or six minutes, that fish is staying up there. It's tamed to the boat. I'm gonna think this fish is gonna bite pretty quick. The deal is, what side of that tree is he gonna take 
take off running on. So all I can see is his tail. He did not eat it. I must have moss on my bait. I do. I like to watch where that fish sits. Generally speaking, the spot that fish wants to protect is generally right underneath it or right in front of it. You know, right, that's, and generally speaking, those bass will exit and enter the same spot of a bed. You know, they just, it's just, they come in and they always go. So I'm always paying attention to all those different things when I get a cantankerous one, you know, not to catch. Um, I want to know what direction he's coming in, what direction he's exiting. You know, a lot of times I might have to start popping a bait to get him to eat it. So he's backing up right now. Uh, he just can't make up his mind, but he's mad. When I start seeing that tail flare. <laughs> oh, he's getting really mad. Oh, he's got it. So instead of moving that bait a bunch, you know, I just let it sit in there. And the longer it was there, <laughs> the madder that fish got. Oh, I love it. I love it because that bass right there, it knew it was eating a Berkeley General. That bass right there knew I was standing here. And yet, you know, I tricked him into biting, which I think is so cool. Come here, buddy. Yes, look at that. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Long, lean, already spawned out. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Beautiful fish. Thanks, bud. Thank you, thank you. I just, you know, I, I know there's lots of trees back here and I know I'm, I'm flirting with disaster, but I sure can catch them in a hurry when I get that spinning rod out. I mean, it's just, it is almost magic, you know, when you get that spinning rod out and whether it be just a weightless general or a drop shot like that, you can make that stuff happen so quick. And especially in a situation like this, where I have such a soft bottom, you know, anything I, I, let, I put in there prior to that, it was getting all that moss on it. So it's just the perfect time to flip that little drop shot in there. Let's go find another one. She's already back up on the bed. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. That is the bed right there. Like you can see, there's just not much to it. You know, it's just a little white spot this side to the right of that stump. My shadow's going over it right now. One of the number one things to do is keep the sun to your back. Right now I'm going against the sun. I can't see near as far, so everything that's in front of me, you know, I'm spooking right now. It's, I love it when the sun's behind me because I can see that much further into the water. Prime example of a bed, that's a dark spot right there. That is a bed. way out there in front of me just swimming that's a nice one that's a nice one yes sir has to have a bed in there i just saw that fish swimming across that opening and i tossed that general out in front of it and that thing right there ate it oh the hook just fell out pretty fish thanks girl thank you thank you I think a lot of times in the evening, you know, fish really start moving up, start getting close to wanting to spawn. I mean, there's just fish flooding the shallows right now. You know, just everywhere I look, I just see fish coming up here, starting to set up. I've seen some pears, but then just fish in general coming up here. They're just everywhere. He's coming up here to look at me. Oh, I love it. And they don't move. <laughs> He's just sitting there, just chilling. Oh, he just swam out. I'm gonna come around and get my, my back to the sun so I can really see him. 
It's not the same fish, but I'll catch you if you want to bite. I think there's one right in there. Oh, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, I thought he's going to eat it. He ate it that time. Golly, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Gosh, I don't like that big line. <laughs> oh, that weightless general, that's a deadly, deadly weapon when them fish are cruising. That fish hadn't been spawning yet. He's just cruising around. I saw him. He's starting to have a bed right up there. Oh, come here, buddy. Come here, come here. Looky there, looky there. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yes, sir. -y. He went right through the nose. What a beautiful fish. Yes. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. I just love seeing them, seeing them bite. It's like topwater fishing. I just love it. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, let's do the power stop breakdown. You know, today it's really simple. I've got clear water. I didn't choose bright white you know, pink baits, you know, a lot of times you see, you see so many people do that. You know, I caught all my fish on two baits. Um, you know, probably one of my most deadly sight fishing baits is just a drop shot, just something like that right there. I've got a four inch general on it, um, just a little two aught straight shank hook, a little eighth ounce weight, a short tag. I mean, that is deadly when it comes to drop shot and that, that bait right there. The other bait was just a general, just a Berkeley Maxent General Watermelon Green. I've got it on a uh, 4 aught worm hook, 14 pound test. Uh, it's just a great bait too. It just, I didn't throw flipping baits today because there's so much junk on the bottom. You know, when you combated with a, a lake or a pond that's got lots of moss, you know, these are the baits that I want to use to keep it up out of that moss. So, uh, you know, there's other baits that I use sight fishing. We'll get into that in another video, but, um, you know, that's my power stop breakdown for this event and uh, those worked really well. So my drop shot, I got it on a 6.9 medium action Johnny Morse uh, Platinum Series, just a size two platinum reel. I've got, I think that's 12 pound braid, eight pound leader. Again, just a, a, a one aught, two aught straight shank hook, a, a green pumpkin, four inch general, little eighth ounce weight. That was my drop shot setup. That, that's deadly when you got conditions like this where you got lots of moss and stuff on the bottom. You know, my other one was this, uh, just this general, five inch general, watermelon green, a four odd hook, 14 pound fluorocarbon, a seven three medium heavy, carbon light rod, eight three to one reel. Uh, man, that was it. That was it. You know, there's other baits that I use all the time, all kinds of flipping baits, jigs, uh, critter hogs, creature hogs, but there's too much moss on the bottom here, so I couldn't use any of that stuff here. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're with this kind of situation in a pond or a lake's got a lot of junk on the bottom, those are the baits that are going to shine. And, uh, you know, we'll show you some more of this stuff going forward in other sight fishing events. You know, I want to do some on more rocky lakes or where those beds are shining or, uh, you know, a little bit further along in the spawn. The spawn's just now starting, so it's kind of just a little bit different. All right, man, let's get back to it. I'm going to try to catch another one before the sun's all the way down. All right, so we've got that bed right there. You've always got to make one presentation from a distance. Oh, he's got it. That's why you always throw. When you like mark a bed, you always want to throw at that bed from a distance. Oh, that's a big tip. You know, I, I go back and catch so many fish that I saw, you know, a long time ago. Awesome, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh, stay on that tree. Stay on that tree. Come on, buddy. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, man. 
I fished for that fish for a while. Come here, buddy. Oh, come here, come here. Yes. Ah, oh, what a pretty fish. What a pretty fish. <laughs> that is so cool. So cool. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I marked that fish earlier. I, uh, you know, put him, came back and caught him. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. It's so much fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I couldn't catch him on the drop shot. I tried to drop shot a few times in there, and uh, that weightless general, I just, drop shot, there's so much moss where he built that bed. That bed was only about that big. As the season progresses, you know, that bed will get bigger and bigger, but, you know, it's just so early. It really hadn't made them really big yet. Guys, so that's just a little bit about sight fishing. That's a little bit of how I do it. I'm gonna do some more of these because you know this lake that I'm on has got a soft bottom, dark beds, and 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 they're just getting started. They're not very far along. So uh, there's multiple stages of this, uh, multiple things I want to talk about. You know, in the future going forward. But uh, man, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I, I love sight fishing bass. It's just I could catch five fish all day long and be a happy camper if I'm sight fishing them because I just it's like me versus the bass you know mono vir mono or whatever they say i just i just like it it's just so much fun to me it's just a challenge and uh you know i won most challenge today i had one right over there that kind of i didn't catch now i could have i just man is getting late and i want to see if i can find another bass but guys i hope you enjoyed it tune in next week we'll be doing it all over again and uh, be sure you subscribe and like and uh, give me a comment <laughs>